This is Colorado Zone Channel 2 News Daybreak. A live look this morning at Highway 287 near Oxford Road in Boulder County. A crash overnight claimed two lives. The man and woman killed were the drivers of two different cars and there were no passengers. Coming up, Ken Clark has an update on how this is impacting your traffic. And other top stories this half hour, a snow day in August. Yeah, we'll show you which part of Colorado got this major, major hailstorm. Hmm. Plus explosive testimony from Taylor Swift herself as she describes what she says a former Denver DJ did to her at a meet and greet at Pepsi Center. Of course, stay with us. Those stories and more just ahead on Daybreak at 6 o'clock. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ernie Bjorkman. And I'm Shaul Turner and for Natalie Tisdall today. Let's get right mm, to look your at that weather. Shot back here. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? It is gorgeous. And I think this stormy weather makes for some beautiful sunsets and sunrises. Oh, it does. It yeah. does. But we want to know if uh, Evans area is going to get more hail like that today. Uh, I think we're going to take it down a notch. All right, good. <laughs> yeah. good, good, Yesterday good. we mm -hmm. added a cold front that helped to kind of get things rolling. But yeah, Shaul and Ernie, today there's still a chance of a storm or two this afternoon, but it, the threat is not like what it was yesterday. I mean, I even talked about the severe weather risk yesterday. Today it's a little different, but what we are seeing right now is fog this morning up and down the front range. Denver, they're covered in some fog. Here's the fog map. You can see the shading showing you where the fog is thickest and the reduced visibilities across the Palmer Divide. The area south of Denver is thicker around Monument Black Forest. It is really thick up here in northern Colorado. Looking at Weldon, Larimer counties, look at Fort Collins, Loveland, Longmont, Greeley. Fractions of a mile of visibility up there. That's where things were heaviest yesterday. A lot of rain fell, a lot of hail fell up there, and that's contributing to the, to the fog this morning. All of that has exited, so it's just fog this morning. And we're looking at temperatures in the 50s right now. Denver, Boulder, Fort Collins, even some 40s, some 30s and 40s up in the mountain towns. Here's where we're headed today. It uh, will eventually, the sun will come out, will turn partly cloudy by lunch, and then 80 is my high here by the evening rush hour. And Ken, just as about a 30% chance of storms here this afternoon. Hopefully nothing like we saw up in the Evans area yesterday with all that hail. Wow. Okay, so at your drive on this Friday morning, you just heard about that fatal crash. 287 is shut down. Our live crew bringing us uh, pictures from that scene of this overnight fatal accident. Now, as the investigation continues, there is a chance this will remain closed for the entirety of the rush. Uh, right now, they have not posted uh, how long this will remain closed. You can't even really make out the model of this car uh, involved, but obviously with live pictures like this, the investigation continues. You can see it's foggy. Sky 2 can't launch yet uh, because the, the ceiling is too low. So 287 shut down between Plateau and Oxford. The alternate routes are pretty uh, identifiable through here. Uh, 119 will get you around it. Also 97th, 95th will get you around it. Just look for those delays uh, in the neighborhood as a result of that crash. Metro Denver, there's more side street problems in Montbello and east of Pena than Metro Denver. We've got a pretty good start. A water main break down along Kipling south of I-70 still has that down to one lane. So look for some delays through there. But here's a live look at I-25 and 70 off to the east through the haze. No major delays yet across I-70, uh, which is good news. We'll show you these travel times, guys, here coming up. Right, Ken, thank you very much. Take a look. Right now, cleanup is underway in Evans. A lot of people trying to find their snow shovels. Yes, it's August. The Weld County town was pounded by wind, rain, and a lot of hail yesterday. By some counts, more than two feet piled up in those neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Two feet. Just difficult to believe this time of year. Jim Hooley is live, though, in Evans with more on the cleanup, how long this is expected to take. Jim, I can't believe you're standing there behind all that ice. I mean I, you know, I can't believe I have a snow shovel in my hand here in the middle of August as well, so. I mean, this is crazy. People shoveling out their driveways in the middle of August. This should not be. But take a look at this. Yes, we did have about two feet of snow up here. Uh, I should say hail. It looks like snow. It's definitely hail, but that's what they had on the ground here yesterday. And we still have about a foot on the ground here still this morning. The temperature here, uh, you know, about 56, 57 or so. So a lot of this should have melted, but it just gives you a good idea as to how much there actually uh, has been on the ground here. Uh, all of this, you know, with all of it still on the ground this morning. Let's take a shovel it, and it takes a while to get down to the ground. Take a look at the pictures that we have from yesterday when it all came down. Late in the afternoon, it turned August into December very quickly in just a matter of moments. All of it coming down in about 10 to 15 minutes or so. Easily a couple of feet piling up. Of course, the kids came out. They did their backflips, and they loved it. Parents, of course, not so happy about some of this. They had a big cleanup underway. Some cars got stuck. Some trucks got stuck. And neighbors had to uh, pitch in and help one another dig out. 
got back from work uh, around six o'clock and uh, going to pick up the little ones from their their mimis right over here and made it through going to pick them up and then uh, coming home yeah another car was coming the opposite direction so I had stopped right in the middle of the two feet of a uh, hill over here and once I stopped couldn't get going just like this truck oh is about to oh yeah. oh get going again. yeah just like that just crazy you know cars getting stuck people getting stuck in it and uh, that man one of the one of the guys up here we should talk to I don't know whether it was that individual or not but well uh, one guy said that he actually took his family down into the basement because the weather got so crazy they went down into the basement for their their own safety but again this is not the case this should not be what you're doing in the middle of Austin. Now, fortunately, uh, the forecast today calls for uh, temperatures to be up around 78 degrees, almost 80 degrees. We've got gray skies up here right now, and we should have partly cloudy skies a little bit later on, but uh, nothing in the forecast. I hope, keep your fingers crossed, nothing in the forecast like we had uh, yesterday here at Evans. What a sight to see, though. All of it is still on the ground. Live in Evans this morning, Jim Hooley, Channel 2 News. <laughs> I can't believe it's August. I know. Well, moving on to the Taylor Swift trial, it continues in Denver in a federal courtroom today. Yesterday, explosive testimony from the defendant. Now, Swift says former Denver DJ David Mueller sexually assaulted her. Under oath, Swift said the former KYGO DJ groped her in a, quote, devious and sneaky attack. She also said that after the incident, she couldn't make eye contact with Mueller or his girlfriend who was there for the photo op. You see right there. Now, Mueller's former boss also testified, saying Mueller was fired for several reasons, including a photo showing the alleged assault and that Mueller changed his story in the days after the incident. Amanda Zitzman has a live report from the courthouse with what's expected to happen today in the next half hour. All right, a man is behind bars this morning, expected to be in court later today for the first time, accused of killing a man in an Englewood Walgreens parking lot. Tevin Eno, a local real estate broker, was stabbed to death on Tuesday night. Eno, his family and friends were getting ready to celebrate his 40th birthday in just a few days when Eno's life was taken. The Arapahoe County coroner says he was stabbed in the chest after some sort of altercation in that parking lot, and that's at Bellevue and South Broadway. Two men were seen entering the store after the killing. We showed you those pictures yesterday. One of those men, Arthur Richardson, has been arrested and now charged with first-degree murder. The other man in this picture was released. And I will tell you this, North Korea better get their act together or they're going to be in trouble like few nations ever have been in trouble in this world. President Trump doubling down on his harsh words against North Korea. Meanwhile, North Korean officials say the U.S. would, quote, suffer a shameful defeat and final doom if it keeps up with sanctions, pressure and military threats. President Trump tweeting just about an hour ago, military solutions are now fully in place, locked, and should North Korea act unwisely, hopefully Kim Jong-un will find another path. Let's hope. Well, stuck in the center of this political storm is the 210-square-mile island of Guam. Yeah, Guam is, of course, a U.S. territory located in the Pacific Ocean. It has a population of 162,000 and strategically vital U.S. Naval and Air Force bases. Young Yang says it may launch four intermediate range missiles toward that island. Now, Guam's mayor, Eddie Calvo, says the island holds no ill will toward North Korea and that a war would be a tragedy, not for them, but for everybody. Zachary San Nicholas just got back to school at CU Boulder after visiting his family for the summer in Guam. My grandmother just told me the other day that she loved me and that what, uh, whatever happens, happens. But just know that I need to continue and what I need to do. Just unbelievable we're talking yeah. about this. Zachary says at least one person he knows is stockpiling the basement of their Guam home with canned goods preparing for a possible strike. Wow. He said it's top of mind for his family, but they aren't letting fear overwhelm them. Well, meanwhile, some folks who are worried about the future are looking to the old school bomb shelters. That's right. They're making a comeback from coast to coast. Sales of bomb shelters are skyrocketing. In Southern California, one company says it's been busier than ever. Its steel shelters are installed 20 feet below ground and range from $20,000 all the way up to $165,000. Mm. Well, the Trump administration's plan to curb legal immigration could hurt the U.S. economy. Now, two recent studies said the RAISED Act would erase 4.6 million jobs by the year 2040. The White House called the results inaccurate 
and said Americans can fill in those job losses for foreign workers. The RAISE Act was introduced last week. It would cut legal immigration in half, require English proficiency, and rank possible immigrants based on skill, expected salary, and age. All right, stay with us at 610. Lots coming up on Daybreak. Why those who are going carb-free mm. may want to stop by a Noodles & Company store. We'll tell you about their latest venture. All right, welcome back. Business News Now podcast. A lot of people listen to them. They're very popular. Yes, they are. So what's the best way to find ones your kids can listen to? Jane King joins us live from New York. Good morning, Jane. Big question. Good morning, Angel. Good morning to you. Yes, I mean, I'm sure a lot. Of, they're, sometimes they're kind of hard to find to search yeah. for them, but uh, they are becoming more popular. But are there age-appropriate ones? And then where can parents find them if there are? Well, CNET says parents can try Leela Kids, that's L-E-E-L-A, which is a free app that curates podcasts for kids. Some of the current podcasts listed topics like dinosaurs, music, and space. Well, Amazon seeking to disrupt yet another industry. It's in talks with U.S. venue owners to sell event tickets, according to Reuters. Reports as Amazon wants to loosen the grip that Ticketmaster has as the exclusive provider of primary tickets for several top concert venues. So another way here, Amazon could leverage its massive customer base. And Broomfield-based Noodles & Company testing zoodles. Those are spiralized zucchini at some of its restaurants. This is an attempt to bring in the carb avoiding customers. Visitors at the test locations can ask to substitute the noodle meal base for zoodles. It does cost an extra dollar fifty. It comes at a time when noodles and company has struggled with sliding sales. Live from the Nasdaq market site in Times Square, I'm Jane King. Back to you. Jane, our consensus is we yes. think it's going to work. Yeah. Put some broth on it. It'll taste okay. I know. Exactly. Yeah. All right, Jane, see you in the next hour. Thank All right. you. See you later. Uh -huh. All right, we have new information this morning. It's official. Last year was the warmest since record keeping began 137 mm. years ago. That's according to the annual State of the Climate Report issued by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association. Yeah, 2016 set new records for global surface temperature, sea surface temperature, and greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane. More than 500 scientists from 60 countries contributed to the report using tens of thousands of measurements. You know, but it still remains a controversy. I know when we talk about climate change, some people will write in and say it's not, it, that's bogus. Uh, some people say, well, look at these statistics. So, right. Chris Tober, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> we'll put I don't you on the hot spot. About it. I'm going to put you yeah. on the spot. The science definitely says this. Yeah. yeah. That's mm -hmm. what it says. Whether you like it or not, that's what it says. Right. And but we the, just have to figure out how to do something with it. But I know right. the people on the other side say it's it's mostly caused by nature, like volcanoes and everything else. So. I don't know. I mean, I know. I'm just looking at the science. Yeah. You know, that's just what it says. And whether you want to do something about it or not, yeah. it's the yeah. science. Just making sense of <laughs> those there. numbers. And it's there on the table. The yeah. If you want to pick it up and do something with it, then. All right, we're not taking a stand. <laughs> we're just, we're just yeah. talking about both sides here. And, and whether, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what, what anybody thinks. It's just. This if, is what happened. This is the science and. Yeah. You know what? If you want to do something about it, then it's right there. It's okay. right there. All right. Okay. You know, this morning, it is, uh, we're dealing with fog, but if you go above the fog up in the mountains, this is what we're seeing here. A nice sunrise up at 13,000 and a little bit of color on the bottom of those clouds, too. If you're looking off towards the high peaks, there it is. That's the 10 mile range. So we'll go over there and we'll take a look from Breckenridge. The slopes here, town down there, you're looking back in that direction. Grays and Tories off into the distance. The camera right around there, we were just looking at it, a eh? basin. The pattern is about the same, but it's going to shift around next week. This high pressure will get moved closer. And as it does, the temperatures next week will go up and things will dry out a little bit. It's in response to that dip in the jet stream. It's going to push it in our direction. So in the mountains, the central mountains, it's totally different for the southern mountains because you're closer to the moisture down there. But in the central mountains, Today, 20% in the afternoon, 30% Saturday, Sunday, up to 40% on Monday. And then there it is, 20%. It starts to dry out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, as that high pressure gets pushed in our direction. Here's our pinpoint feature cast. So the fog burns away at lunchtime today. Moisture already starting to come into southern Colorado. This is where most of the moisture is going to be today in southern Colorado through the afternoon evening rush hour. We may have a storm or two across the central and northern mountains and the front range, but certainly nothing like what we had yesterday. Not to that level, but look at all the moisture in southern Colorado at nine o'clock tonight, 10 o'clock overnight. This even suggests Saturday morning it's still wet down there in southern Colorado. 
won't be the case in the central to northern mountains, but it is in southern Colorado. 80 today will do it. 70s for highs in the mountains. Over the next seven days, here it is, and the chances remain about the same for the front range. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, all at 30% in the afternoons. After that, we start to dry out and warm up, Ken. We're talking middle 80s by the middle of next week. That's going to be a hot Thursday. Well, we're tracking your Denver drive, starting to see some problems. Kind of busy for a Friday. Uh, this is 6th Avenue coming in from Lakewood. They're dealing with a crash around Lowell. Uh, this camera is right around Wadsworth, so the delays aren't back to Wadsworth yet. Uh, if traffic gets really snarled along 6th Colfax, and uh, Alameda will get you around it. Right now, there's just a few delays kind of in that area. Kipling looking at a water main repair south of I-70, while off in the uh, Montbello area, 56th, uh, dealing with a crash and uh, possibly some lane closures north of I-70. So keep that in mind. Metro Denver, like I said, busy for a Friday. Way up to the north, we are tracking the full closure from an overnight crash along 287. It still remains shut down in both directions. Two cars involved in this. Both drivers were killed as a result of this crash. So that investigation continues. 287 closed between Plateau and Oxford. This one could be shut down for the entire rush. There's no word from crews when it will be reopened. Uh, I-76 and 270, these routes are problem free. They're seeing some delays starting to, as things transition. But Sean and Ernie, we've had more problems on the side streets in Metro Denver than the highway so far today. All right. Thanks again. Thanks, Ken. Well, the Great American Solar Eclipse. Are you ready for really, it? Really, it is? It's coming up. It is. It's coming up. <laughs> and if you're planning to, to get a good look at it, you need the right glasses, yeah. of course. Experts say sunglasses are not enough. You need to look for ones with an ISO icon. But don't bother buying them. Uh, several libraries are offering free Eclipse viewers, including Aurora, Denver, Jefferson, Arapahoe, and Douglas County's public libraries. So if you want to get free ones, go there. But if you still want to pay out some money, you can also buy a pair at Home Depot as well as Lowe's. Hmm. Well, check out this graphic from NASA. It shows which parts of the United States will see the full solar eclipse and how much light the other areas are going to get. So the closest area to here getting the full eclipse on August 21st is Wyoming. The moon will block out 90% of the sun here in Denver. The entire thing lasts for about two hours from 11 to 1 with the most blackout around 1146. Yeah, and we just got this in. Uh, the Nebraska Department of Transportation will shut down I-80, the interstate, to oversized semi-trucks from that Friday through the eclipse on that Monday the mm. 21st because they're afraid that if it gets too dark, there could be some serious accidents. Sure, I, I, could, I can see so that. So no oversized yeah. semis along I-80 in Nebraska during that weekend and the day of the eclipse. Right. Interesting. Isn't that neat? Of yeah. course, we'll have full coverage here as well. Well, coming up on Daybreak, students say they don't feel safe at intersections near their schools. That has been an issue. We'll tell you what a new study has to say about crosswalk safety now. And why do you assume that I'm afraid of anything? It's one of the most frightful times for kids, the transition to middle school. There are even movies and TV shows all about it. This is middle school. It's our time to get crazy and live life. So we'll enjoy our middle school years. Today, here's our list of top middle school fears and how to conquer them. Hey. What are you doing? Say something, CJ. Not having friends. Friend groups change from grade school to middle school, and your kid knows it. The experts at Scholastic.com say to focus that fear on new beginnings and remind your kids they've made friends before and they can do it again. Next up, being last for class. <laughs> Gotta go. Bye. Your middle schooler may have tons of energy, but they're likely worried that they won't be able to navigate the halls and they might be singled out if they show up late. Scholastic says, help your child make a plan. Who will they ask if they get lost? And help them get organized so they don't spend too much time at their locker. And speaking of lockers. <laughs> Believe it or not, many middle schoolers are terrified of not being able to open their locker. The advice, buy a combination lock now and let them practice. Some good advice there. Well, also some alarming numbers. As kids head back to school, a new report shows a whopping 73% of students don't feel safe at intersections near their schools. More than 1,000 students in 22 states, including Colorado, took part in a teen road safety assessment. Students from four schools in Colorado gave their input, including Cherry Creek, Ponderosa, North Glen, and Centauri in Lahara. 
Well, the study shows 47% of the 71 schools surveyed didn't think students had enough time to cross the street safely. 40% of schools surveyed said the school pedestrian crosswalks were not painted properly. That's Most teachers, educators, and school administrators just don't think about, they think about how students feel inside the building, but very rarely, rarely talk about what's happening outside the doors. Well, the FCCLA organization encourages students to go to their school boards and to ask local leaders to fix these problems. Certainly uh -huh. not a safe situation. And I know if you're speeding through a school zone, you're uh, going to get a stiff fine yeah, with tickets. Yeah, so. be careful, very careful. They're Especially all these heading days. back. Yeah. Yes. Well, much more to come in the next half hour of Daybreak. Where this big barn went up in flames and the animals that were able, luckily, to escape. This is Colorado Zone Channel 2 News Daybreak. All right, a live look from Sky 2. Look at the fog hanging over the metro area. That's because of all that rain and especially hail that we got yesterday afternoon. So it could be a foggy morning for your morning commute. And also your top stories this half hour. Taylor Swift testifies against a former Denver DJ. What she had to say and what's expected to happen in the civil trial today. Plus, we know more about radio personality Stefan Tubbs, the reaction from KOA Radio after his arrest on domestic violence charges. And the Broncos pull out a win in their first preseason game. Nick Griffith reports from Chicago with details on the unknown quarterback and Colorado native who brought the whole thing home. These stories and more right now on Daybreak at 630. And good morning. I'm Shaw Turner in for Natalie Tisdall. Yeah, and I'm Ernie Bjorkman. Thank you so much for joining us at 630. Cleanup is underway this morning. Yes, Let's show them. It's hard to imagine <laughs> this when you look at the calendar, then you look at this, right? But this is Weld County. This town pounded by wind, rain, and hail yesterday. Lots of hail, as you can see. This photo from Becky McLean. By some counts, more than two feet piled up. Some cars got stuck, actually, and the kids, of course, really enjoying this. Yeah, if they went back to school, I don't know if they try to get a snow day yeah. out of this. But this is August, <laughs> folks. This is August, and uh, look at all that hail. Looks like snow. That was the town of Evans, and they got clobbered yesterday. Chris Tober joins us now to uh, <laughs> tell the folks up in Evans if they can expect more expect the same today. It's just incredible, isn't it? It is. Uh, in that hail, we're going to take it all down a notch today. I'm not expecting another okay. <laughs> hail storm like that. Yes. But Hooley's up there. Jim Hooley's up there with his snow shovel this morning up in Evans, uh, digging out a place to eat breakfast up there in the Evans this morning. You know, we've been dealing with a lot of fog. I'm watching the chopper show, which I was going to show you, but I can't now because it just landed. So... Uh, yeah, too foggy. They gave it the old college try, but uh, it is just too foggy. Another perspective of the fog above it up here at 14,150 feet in Pikes Peak. You're looking at a sea of fog out there and the sun shining above it. We are down here in the fog this morning. Look at the fog map. Reduced visibilities across Denver and areas to the south as well. Black Forest near zero visibility up in northern Colorado. It's even thicker. The view, look at that. Not much of one in Loveland, Fort Collins, or Greeley this morning. So radar satellite, all the action we had in terms of thunderstorms across northern Colorado and the eastern plains gone now. It's Pretty quiet except for the fog. 53 degrees Denver right now. It's in the 50s. Broomfield, Littleton, Lakewood. 80 is my forecast high here today. Fog early, then some sunshine, followed by a couple of thunderstorms this afternoon. All right, Ken, how are we looking on the roads? Well, the Metro Denver Drive for a Friday, I got to tell you, Chris, it's pretty busy. Uh, we're still tracking the overnight closure due to the double fatal crash up along 287. Tow trucks are now there. They are continuing, though, to investigate and take pictures of this scene. 287 remains closed between Oxford and Plateau as a result of this crash. The two drivers were the only ones involved in this crash, but both were killed. So that still remains an issue this morning uh, just to the south of Longmont. Metro Denver, I tell you what, we've got problems that just popped up along 25. Sixth Avenue dealing with a crash in and around Lowell, jamming things back towards Wadsworth. There's a look at those delays. If you live in Lakewood, this is the eastern side of 6th. Get some extra time in your drive. Uh, Alameda, Colfax will get you around it, but I don't think this crash along 6th is a, is a serious one, but it is costing you some time. Uh, 270, slow. I-70 also slow. These routes, though, they remain problem-free, guys. We'll break down the delays caused by that new I-25 crash. We'll give you those slowdowns here coming up. Thanks a lot, Ken. Also, we want to let you know right now, the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office is searching for a missing at-risk woman. This is 38-year-old Abby Hefner. The sheriff's office says she was last seen around 345 yesterday afternoon on South Fraser Street near Parker and Orchard Roads. 
She has red hair, blue eyes, and was last seen wearing black leggings and a black shirt. So let authorities know if you see Abby. And the search for another man up in Longmont. Longmont police also need your help finding this man this morning. Police say 19-year-old David Nolasco Orozco was last seen last night around 7 near his home around 4th Avenue and Dixon Street in Longmont. David has autism and police say he should be wearing leg braces. So if you see any of these two people, please call police. It's now day five in the Taylor Swift trial. If you're keeping count this morning, we expect to hear from more witnesses after Taylor Swift took the stand herself yesterday. Swift accuses a former Denver radio DJ of groping her at a meet and greet in 2013. Amanda Zitzman is live outside the federal courthouse in downtown Denver with a look at what Swift said and what's expected to happen today, Amanda. Well, court is expected to resume here in a little more than two hours. We'll have to wait and see the next witness that they call to the stand. It could be Taylor Swift's bodyguard who said that he saw Mueller lift Taylor Swift's skirt. We could also hear from an economist that's supposed to talk about loss or Mueller incurred as a result of all this, in addition to a sexual assault expert that's going to analyze Taylor Swift's actions after all of this went down. Now, no cameras allowed in the courtroom, but we do have some sketches to show you. Taylor, as you guys mentioned taking the stand very blunt witty agitated with the DJ David Mueller's attorney Mueller meanwhile seemed withdrawn he had his head in his hands as Taylor spoke she said quote it happened to me I know it was him and quote I'm not going to allow you or your client to make it seem like this is in any way my fault because it isn't you know one of the fans that we spoke to here this morning he's been here every single day of this trial giving us updates we've talked to him practically every morning here is his take on Taylor taking the stand. I think it's going really, really well in her favor. Um, right now, Mueller's case looks like it's kind of falling apart. Uh, Taylor was really direct yesterday, really forceful, you know, stuck to her guns, uh, didn't back down. Uh, the lawyer for the plaintiff side was trying to, um, seemed like he was trying to get her to change her story, and she said, you know, you keep grilling me on little details. I know you're just doing your job, but I'm not going to change my story. This is what happened, and I'm sticking to it. Now, we also heard from Mueller's KYGO bosses. They said they felt Mueller was lying to them and that they fired him for violating the morality clause of his contract. Mueller maintaining, though, that all groping allegations are false, that he was terminated without cause, and he blames Taylor Swift, suing her for $3 million, saying he wants to clear his name of these allegations. We already have some fans here lining up this morning. Someone actually just brought them some donuts here. But I would say a little more than 10, maybe about 15 people here in line this morning. They will get inside the courtroom. They've been allowing them inside about 8 o'clock every morning. So here in about an hour and a half, they will be led inside. So far, the lawyers are requesting an hour and 15 minutes each for closing arguments. So that could take two and a half hours once that begins. But first, we've got to get through all the witnesses. Could take, uh, could get to the closing arguments today. Could get to the Monday, maybe even Tuesday. It really just depends how all of this plays out. But, of course, we will be following it all for you. For now, live outside the downtown Denver courthouse, Amanda Zitzman, Channel 2 News. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. That guy with the long hair, he's been there every morning. I call him Meatloaf, by the way. We need, we need to find out who he is and do a story on him. All right, meanwhile, Taylor Swift fans in Denver are hoping post-it notes and a large window display will be enough for the music superstar to receive their message of support. In the downtown office building across the street from the federal courthouse, a group of Swifties have one of the best vantage points in the city. Craftsy employees are putting lyrics to Swift songs on the window using the post-its to send a positive message. Taylor is a really great role model. She's a to say hello. Well, right now, police are offering a $40,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of a gunman who killed a good Samaritan. Kelly Acosta was killed. In Anyone with information should call Metro Denver Crime Stoppers. Charges have been filed in the killing of a 28-year-old woman. It's a sad story. Stabbed to death last week in her Five Points apartment. Police say 24-year-old Estefan Hamlin, a homeless man, killed 28-year-old Christina Weir and then stole her car. Hamlin is now charged with murder. They say it was the latest in a string of violence just last month. Weir's friends say they are heartbroken. It's horrible. It's just this, this terrible sinking feeling uh, that you have. I think there's more that can be done. What that is, I don't follow killings by homeless people up in Thornton as well as downtown Denver. Those happened in May 
and June. Well, Channel 2 has, <coughs> excuse me, has learned that Stefan Tubbs is no longer with KOA Radio's morning news program. Many of you have been asking us about the status of his position. Tubbs recently pleaded not guilty to domestic violence charges. Now, in a statement, iHeart Media Denver President Tim Hager said, quote, we appreciate all of his contributions during his time with us, and we wish him well. Well, new this morning, a barn and Parker goes up in flames. Look at this video. Wow. It's from South Metro Fire. Just look at that barn go up. It happened near Monson Boker and mm -hmm. Hess to the west of Parker Road. Well, several chickens were inside the barn playing very well and on offense for the first three quarters. Yeah, until the third string guy came in, revved it up. For more on how yes. the team was reacting after the game, sports director Nick Griffith joins us from Soldier Field in Chicago. The end result was a good one here at Soldier Field as the Broncos offense rallied back for two fourth quarter touchdowns to propel themselves to a win over the Bears. Uh, the only problem with that is neither of those touchdowns were engineered by the two guys fighting for the starting job, Trevor Simeon and Paxton Lynch. After both Simeon and Lynch led the offense to a combined three points in seven combined series between the two, it was the University of Northern Colorado quarterback coming in, Kyle Sloter, the rookie, threw for a 47-yard touchdown. And then he engineered the game-winning drive and let fellow rookie D'Angelo Henderson race off for a 41-yard touchdown run. Now, keep in mind, Sloter's success did come against the third and fourth string defense of the Bears. Hence, Vance Joseph, after the game, says he has no interest in adding a third quarterback to the ongoing starter debate. As a starter for us? No. No. No, we've got those. Uh, we got Trevor and we got Paxton that we, you know, we've been satisfied with. You know, and... Uh, you know, they're both playing good football. You know, outside of the penalties tonight, I was, I was impressed with both, both guys, so no. Next up for the Broncos, they go to San Francisco to play a week from Saturday. As for the quarterback competition, it'll be the exact same, only flip-flopped. It'll be Paxton Lynch getting the start next week in San Fran with Trevor Simeon coming on in relief duties. At Soldier Field in Chicago, Nick Griffith, Channel 2 News. All right, I, I say give yep. the uh, Colorado, Northern Colorado yes. University quarterback a shot with a, a good team. Just a, a chance. chance. I like yes. him. I like him. Well, lots coming up on Daybreak. The Rugged Maniac 5K back in the metro area, and you can still sign up if you really have the nerve to sign up. <laughs> Plus, a car plunges question. down seven stories of a parking garage. Oh, oh, oh. there it is. She survives that accident. We'll tell you more. That reminds me of the days when Jackie Jing used to work here. Remember her? Oh, I remember those. She had some parking issues, Ken. I'm just... Hey, by the way, happy birthday to Tracy, whoever the heck Tracy is. And when we come back, some scary moments for Britney Spears. On stage, somebody rushes her. Wow. <laughs> Sky 2 this morning setting a record for the shortest flight ever. We showed you they launched over Rocky Mountain Airport north of here, but because of heavy fog, they went back down, touched down, just a little under a minute later. Well, records go, go back a full, what, 13 minutes for uh -huh. this? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it's a short record yeah. period, but. And talking yeah. about uh, flying, uh, we just hear it's breaking news, a JetBlue plane yeah. jet going from Florida to Barbados had to turn around again because three of the flight attendants got sick. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have more on that hopefully in the next few hours. Yeah. Good. No. You know, speaking of that fog this morning. Is that Ernie, all because of that hail up north? I and think all that? that has a lot to do with it. All the moisture yeah. that fell from mm -hmm. those thunderstorms yesterday, eventually, you know, it gets back into the air. It evaporates yeah. into the air, and then if you cool the temps enough, you get this big area of fog. Okay, so look back to the origin of these storms yesterday. Very cool shot here from David Mayhew up in Rocky Mountain National. He was up there just kind of watching as everything was brewing and coming together yesterday. We had that cold front, which forced the winds to the northeast. That's an upslope wind. Everything was just kind of following the contour of the terrain up there and building those thunderstorms. So they were born up here, and then they just rolled across Fort Collins, Larimer, Weld counties, dropping all that rain and hail. And uh, the view now, though, is clear above all the fog. So we're above it right here up at a base and looking across a clear mountain view this morning. And the pattern remains about the same through the weekend. But next week, high pressure will start to get nudged in our direction by that dip in the jet stream. So as that high moves in next week, a couple of things are going to happen. It eventually will start to dry out. 
and the temperatures will also start to come up today though in the mountains the central mountains about a 20 percent chance it goes up to 30 percent on saturday 30 percent on sunday in the afternoons different story altogether for the southern mountains looks a lot wetter down there on monday the chance goes up to 40 and then it starts to dry out with that high pressure and so the fog burns away by the lunch hours indicated right here and at noon we're sunny into the afternoon just isolated storms central to northern mountains in the front range not nearly the kind of intensity or coverage that we had yesterday with all that severe weather, but there's a lot more moisture in southern Colorado. Look at it coming in here at 9 o'clock tonight. San Juan, San Greta Cristos, and this actually indicates that it's still there on Saturday morning. And highs today at 80, Denver, Boulder, Fort Collins, a lot of 70s for highs in the mountain towns. Over the next seven days, it's pretty uniform here for the front range. The chance of an afternoon storm is there all the way through Monday at 30%. And then, as indicated, uh, we start to dry it out a little bit. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the rain, ch rain chances go down, and can the temperatures go up? All right, that's good news. Well, your Friday drive, we're still monitoring the closure of 287. These are live pictures of the tow trucks are out here on the scene, but this was a double crash. Two cars involved, rather, a double fatal. Uh, both cars, both drivers were killed. So 287 still remains closed uh, between Plateau and Oxford. It is off to the west of 25 and south of Longmont. So look for some delays through there. Even though the tow trucks are on the scene, that doesn't mean that uh, 287 is close to being reopened. Uh, I-25, you can see it right through here. It's moving along at a pretty good pace from Fort Collins back into the city, even with uh, the fog reported. Uh, earlier crash along I-25 at 120th moved out of the way. Conditions along 6th are slow. Kipling dealing with a water main break, and you can see we're still monitoring a crash along 56 and 225 has its backup. So that 6th Avenue drive, there was an accident along those eastern lanes east of Sheridan, jammed it all the way back almost to Kipling. So those slowdowns, they're getting better, but if you live in Lakewood, it's still about 12 minutes, and you, you can see from uh, Parker Road up towards 25, 225 is now loaded up. So it's been a busy rush for a Friday, guys. It really has, and a sad one. Thanks again. All right, the Rugged Maniac 5K Obstacle Course is back in the metro area this weekend, and it's expected to draw in close to 6,000 people. In a story that's unique to Colorado, Kevin Torres is in Morrison this morning with a preview of this event and how you can still sign up. Rugged Maniac is a 5K obstacle course mud run. With 25 obstacles being built before Saturday, the crew has its work cut out, especially since each obstacle is a different challenge. It's ranging from mud, obviously, to we've got a couple inflatable obstacles and our biggest slide this year. There's also a ringer and some fire on the course for participants to get by. The biggest thing that we kind of strive for is teamwork. We want people to come out and enjoy the event. Before you get anxious and think to yourself, I can't do that, listen up. There's literally only one event dedicated to the best of the best athletes. Every other competition is for folks like us. It's not too intense. You know, we want to make it so it's attainable and achievable by you know, everyone of every fitness level. Overall, 5,000 to 6,000 people are expected here at Thunder Valley Motocross on Saturday. Registration is currently 90% full, so if you do want to attend, make sure you get there a little early. So it's pretty much a day-long event uh, that kind of starts around 9 o'clock in the morning, goes to about 4 or 5. So cool. If you're interested in registering, just log on to kwgn.com, click on this story, and of of course, we'll link you up, make it easy for you. In Morrison, with another story that's unique to Colorado, I'm Kevin Torres, Channel 2 News. Well, a downtown Denver restaurant closes without warning after just seven months. Employees at Stella's on 16th say they showed up to find the upscale eatery closed. Signs on the door say the restaurant is closed for maintenance. But according to an employee, the manager says the owner actually shut down for good. About 40 employees haven't been paid. And they tell us they can't get in touch with the owner. About $800, um, but every single person who worked in the last two weeks was not paid for those two weeks. They won't pick up the phone and we don't know their home addresses. Well, a man identifying himself as the owner's former attorney confirmed the restaurant is closed. We tried reaching out to the owner and we haven't heard back yet, but we'll stay on that. Yeah, you feel yeah. for the, the employees. They're just out, yeah. of, out of money. They got to pay rent, mm -hmm. mortgages, whatever. Look at this. Oh. oh! Incredible video from Texas. Keep watching that screen there. The BMW plunged seven floors inside a parking garage. Oh. The driver was able to get out with the help of bystanders. The drivers of the other car had his window down and heard a noise, which is why he stopped. <laughs> and then stepped on the gas. This happened last month. The video was just released. And again, the woman driving that car that fell seven stories, fine. I mean, <laughs> she suffered something? some minor injuries, but...
Yeah, look oh. at this guy. You oh. all right? <laughs> Can you imagine? What happened? I mean, do you open. just drive, not pay attention and drive over the edge? I or? don't know. Maybe, you know, one of those things where you think you're in reverse. Yeah. Or you hit the gas or you mm, think you're in park. Yeah. But they have those wires usually to protect, because you know that's bound to happen. They usually have some oh, sort of barrier. What's nice, look at all these people coming to the oh, help, wow. coming to rescue her. Anyway, so they pull her out, and uh, yeah, again, she survived. Wow. Crazy, huh? Close call for that other car. Imagine getting out. Oh, I need something out of the trunk. <laughs> oh, oh <no>. okay. <laughs> All right, we have some celebrity birthdays this morning, Shaw. Can I do this one? Yes. Chris Hemsworth like is 34. <laughs> 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 Way to go, Joe. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Can I do this one? Yeah, Joe Rogan's right. 50. Joe Rogan's Joe Rogan 50. Look at that sexy man. Well, look, he looks like you, Ken. He sure does. Put oh, some glasses Mike. on him. Great actress, Viola Davis is 52 years old. Academy Award for Fences. Oh, can I do this one? Can I do this one? Do this one. You're going to go down when I take you in my pile driver and crush you with my bare hands. Hulk Hogan is 64 <laughs> years old. You want to see my sex tape? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, want to talk about that divorce? What did you just say, Ernie? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I heard you. you he was talking about I was Hulk talking about Hogan. the Hulk Hogan and his yeah. sex tape. <laughs> Have a good weekend, y'all. I'll see you on Monday. It's too early see? to talk about sex tapes, Ernie. No. We gotta wake, no. We got to wake people up out there. <laughs> That's not the way to do it. We're shutting the show down. We're quitting early, folks. 7 o'clock. Go about your business. Let's talk about somebody who uh, I, I've met several times. I love him. He's a good guy. Oh, who is it? Channing Tatum. Boy, is he a good guy. And he's going cross-country to promote his new film, but he goes in one particular convenience mart and decides to have some fun with the gal behind the counter. And yeah, things do eventually get a little cray-cray. Hey. <laughs> Beatrice. Beatrice Chan. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you. My name is Beatrice. Nice to meet you. Um, Thank you. You want to ring him up first and then, and then we can, uh, no, we can talk? No, he can get out. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what y'all doing here? Just chilling? Uh, we're actually driving across the country. Um, Why well, uh, aren't y'all there? I could have got my clothes together and I'd have rolled in. Go, Beatrice. Go, Beatrice. And he's it's your birthday. A, he's a great dancer. He is a great dancer. Yeah. He is an awesome dancer. In fact, a couple of my friends are going to Las Vegas this weekend. And don't forget, there is now a Magic Mike stage show in Las Vegas. Is there really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Isn't it nice he's driving across country instead of flying, you know, first class, and meeting all these people? <laughs> Road, Road trip. trip. Road trip. I think Beatrice is going to go along the next leg. Yes. Remember she said, can yeah. I get a change of clothes and go with you? Yeah. Hey, now a frightening <laughs> moment for Britney Spears when a fan somehow got on stage in Vegas. So a visibly frightened Spears escorted off by security. Her quick thinking dancers getting the credit for holding the guy down until security agents arrived. Police say the man was rushed the stage after he was asked to leave for being disruptive and he was later arrested. You know, Oh. This almost happened when I saw Donnie and Marie on stage, but uh, luckily the ladies hover around. Her rascal <laughs> was so slow getting up to the stage they had plenty. <laughs> they had plenty of time to stop her. I love you, Donnie. Oh. Okay. Anyway, a little bit country. I'm only kidding. I love Donnie and Marie. Hey, Chris, if you're going out to it. eat this weekend, yes, I am you know, actually. You want to listen to this? All what right. About it? We have who's making the grade in our restaurant report card next.